Welcome to Robin's TV Extra Time, the show here where we take an in-depth look, a tactical look at Bristol City's performances across the season. Tonight, of course, it was high-flying Sheffield United who were the visitors here to Ashton Gate. Uh, and after what was a fairly flat first half, the game certainly exploded in the second. Plenty of drama, plenty of action to take a look at. And I'm delighted to be joined here in the studio by two former City players, Joe Barnell and Leroy Rossini. Thanks for joining us both uh, for this one. Uh, let's get straight into it, shall we? Um, probably the overriding emotion at full time was one of frustration. Um, Joe, I'll start with you. You were on comms watching it. What did you make uh, of the game? Exactly that. I think it's frustration to go from a, a winning position to what effectively losing the game. Mm. And I, I think it was it was as much to do with us, you know, gifting, not necessarily gifting them, but certainly giving them many opportunities they shouldn't have had. Mm. Um, I think that'd be the disappointing thing that we're in such a strong position. Having, uh, I mean, they made three substitutions, which I thought we dealt with really well. Mm. Didn't have much of an impact. It was always us in the ascendancy. Got got the penalty. Got the goal. And then sat back. Mm -hmm. Formation change possibly didn't help, but uh, there'll be there'll be bits we'll talk about to sh you know later. Yeah. But it was it was that's the disappointing thing for me too. Absolutely, and we mm -hmm. can sort of share some of the sort of stats uh, behind the game really, and sort of pour into where this game was won and lost. But perhaps the the most obvious one to to highlight here was the expected goals for a team that's notched two. Sheffield United statistically only expected. 0.96. Leroy, your thoughts? Yeah, and, and Joe's absolutely right. Um, it's Bristol City, you know, did work so hard to wrestle control of that game in the mm. second half. You know, with all the stuff, you know, we said it was cage in the first half, they kept their shape, they kept their discipline. You know, when they had plays, they had to go off injured. They did, uh, George Earth, he did, went into right back, did a really good job. And then they got control of the game. Then when they got that control of the game, they looked the more likely. Then they get the goal and then you think, OK, just keep playing, just keep playing. And then you see that the quality of chances that Bristol City uh, created was, was one and a half, a half a goal more than what they scored. You know, yeah. uh, Sheffield United was almost half what, what they scored. So they're not really clear-cut chances that they got, but they stuck the ball in the back of the net. And, and that's, but Joe's right, and it's about, I said about moments mm. uh, in games that are really important. You know, sometimes you look at technique, then you just look at performances, but there's certain moments, and moments aren't just about scoring goals. Mm. Moments are... Uh, holding the ball up at the right time. Moments are the keeper catching the ball and falling to the ground towards the end of the game and the everything going flat and getting in shape. Those are just as important moments in games and City didn't get those moments right. No, no, and it's a, a, an old and somewhat lazy cliche, but it's a game of two halves. We'll start with the first, uh, the first 45 mm -hmm. uh, minute period in terms of some of the, the highlights and some of the clips uh, to show here. Um, and evidence of what City were trying to do in, in that first 45, what did, what did you see? Well, I think firstly, it's important to say that there was a lot of changes to the side, and uh, and I think that I don't want to be overly critical, as, as disappointed mm. as I am watching that and thinking we should have won the game. Um, but there was yeah, there was a lot of different players in different positions, which actually put a good shift in. You mm. know, like Leroy said, and uh, you know, we admire that, and that, that that we worked hard to get in that. So mm. first half, yeah, it was a bit cagey. I thought Sheffield United started relatively well and showed moments of of class, and you could certainly tell the the midfielder Souza. Um, mm -hmm. And Hamar as well. Mm. It's just you, you can just see how they move, how they manipulate the ball, the touches. You, you can see they're on another level. Mm. You know, I'm mm. sure if you compared compared the wage bills mm. and the parachute <laughs> exactly. payments and whatever mm. else, mm. It, you, you saw those moments. So we did we did relatively well and mm -hmm. kept them. You know, they, it was a draw was a fair result. You know, at half time, mm. Mm. and we'd earned that right to get into the game later on. Yeah, and, and you're, you're right, Joe. I just thought City's plan was, was was a good one. The more I, that I watched it, even though it was cagey and. You know, there wasn't a lot of goal mouth action. Mm. Their shape was really good. When they won the ball, they, you know, they went into a mid block. And when they, that's when they have put, put the press on. Zach gets tight. Naismith gets tight. They win that midfield duel. And then they're looking to pass forward. And unfortunately, Naki, Naki just didn't quite add the pace. Mm -hmm. The quality of the pass going forward wasn't quite right. But you could see that the plan was a really good plan. As, and, and the reason why is because, you know, the, the two centre centre-halves aren't the quickest. Again, forward pass. This time, Naki does get on it. But he, can't, again, can't get control of the ball. Mm. To, to then get other runners uh, into the game. And that's why they made the, the change at half-time for Sinclair Armstrong. Mm. Uh, you know, these, these were the three really good opportunities where City won the ball high at the pitch and, high, and then did, the, and Naki didn't do as well as he could have done. I thought he should have taken a shot there yeah. but he had nothing else on, really. I wondered there, those mm. clips there, you could see that Naki looked a little bit leggy to me. Yeah. And yeah. I think it was a, probably an obvious change at half-time to mm. bring in those fresh legs having played so much football and obviously his age now yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, Mm. But uh, 
Yeah, I think we should have. We just lacked that little bit of quality first half in the final third. Yeah, yeah. But that ball was on, and we're going to see that again. Mm -hmm. I think uh, certainly with uh, what led to the penalty for City in a second. But um, in terms of those key moments, then from from the first half, um, both teams hitting the post, hitting the woodwork. Um, it was City first. In fact, it was just a minute apart. Mm -hmm. Twenty-four minutes, Naki Wells. Um, but it's Yu Hirakawa just finding that ball. Uh, in you know finding a player in the in the box there. Um, and Joe, you were just commentating on this. Um, well, in terms of the build-up? Yeah, well, there's nothing worse as a defender. I haven't played right back myself. There's nothing worse <laughs> than a, a left winger getting in your face and, and fronting you up and getting at you effectively, mm. particularly in the box where you don't want to make that clum clumsy challenge. But, you know, there you go. Good cross. Failed to defend it. Naki's just a little bit, yeah, yeah, unlucky there. You know, on another day, could have fallen to him and nicked it inside the post. Yeah, and he's in a good run of form, obviously, so you almost half expected him to, to manage to turn that in. I promise you, if he scored that goal, he wouldn't have been leggy. He would have played <laughs> it. He would have, been, he would have given him the adrenaline to go forward. I thought he's really unlucky because what happens is he's just passing their post where he, he makes contact mm. and he's just instinctive. He's not, There's not a lot more he could do there and it's outside of the post. And this was their best moment of the fir uh, first half. Hamer going through. Again, he's not got a lot and he just goes for power. And he's unlucky not to, to see that, you know, go off, uh, off the post. Lucky for Bristol City that it uh, ricocheted to, to safety. But yeah, a little bit of luck, it just ricochets to him. Uh, and, uh, you know, he does exactly the right thing, goes for power. And, mm. uh, you know, Max was really pleased to see that, you know, go out for a throw to, to City. And those were the two main moments in, in, in the first yeah. half. Yeah, and you think, you know, nil nil half time, um, you know, a fair result of where the game was? Yeah, I think so. I think we, we Leroy said earlier, we had a good shape. You know, we did, I mean, there's a lot of changes. We had a good shape. We limited their chances. Mm. We had a couple of good chances ourselves. I think we lacked a little bit of quality at times in the mm -hmm. final third, given that there were a couple of half chances where we could have taken an early shot, um, allowed the defenders to recover. Mm -hmm. But it was, you know, we're getting towards third, you know, a third, third in the league. A decent wage bill yeah. and parachute payments and whatever else. It was, yeah, it was a good, good performance. Yeah. I would say. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, you're right to mention, of course, Naki looking. Perhaps just a, a little leggy after a few uh, sort of games uh, starting, and it was Armstrong that came on in the second half as, as a tactical tweak. Uh, so we can take a look at actually at some of his uh, sort of moments, uh, and you, you sort of highlighted uh, off air in many ways, doing some good work. It, ju it just wasn't quite working at this point in the match, was it? Yeah, just over keen, you know. Mm. Uh, you know, he just he, he does all the hard work, and then he's got to take take a breath and find the right pass. You know, I I I. I you know, when he, I like, I wouldn't want him there now. I just say, give the ball to, and, and go and get in the box. You know, don't, don't, don't run. And they're delighted. You know, Suter's delighted. He's running towards the, the corner flag. This is where yeah. he wants him. He just needs to go and get in the box. So at the time, I say, just you know, you've done all the hard to give it to someone. Just turn yeah. your back. I always say to centre forwards. I've said it before. Mm. Centre forwards should just give the ball and just turn your back on the game and say, let all your let your technicians. You you find a way to get the ball to me in the box yeah. so I can go and score. But he was a bit over enthusiastic. He was full of energy. He just at that moment wasn't using the energy mm. in, in the right mm. way. And it was in that actually that last example where where you were saying, mm. run down, you know, get into the box, get into the box. Mm. Uh, because that ball was on and actually just a few minutes later it, it comes off. Um, I think it's Max Burrs who manages to find him and that's what leads to the opener. Yeah, it was this, this moment here where it was a perfect ball, perfectly weighted, perfect mm. ball and I thought here we go, you know, great great opportunity where we, we'd been playing well and at this point you could see the team growing in confidence. And, uh, yeah, and but, it, but that's why I want to see Sinclair just making shorter runs between the width of the 18 yard box. So he's going in on goal and he's causing panic. Mm. You know, I, if I was a defender and I saw him running out towards a corner flat, which is, you know, which he does, and I can understand that when you're going from back, to, I'd be delighted. Mm. Because when he's running to the corner flat, people can get back. You can't catch him up from there, leads to the penalty, gets in the box, mm. and they get his goal. So it was a terrific play by him, lovely ball by, by Max Bird. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. And from then, from then on, this was a moment where City had full control and then. It's about managing the game. It really is, and it's about keeping the ball. And chances will come, mm. you know, because Sheffield United will come out of their shape. They'll come out of their holes. So yeah. by keeping the yeah. ball, that's when the opportunities will, will, will come. Mm. And uh, they didn't quite do that. Uh, and Joe, I want to ask you as well. You sort of mentioned uh, you could almost sense apprehension in the crowd when Alice was sort of standing over the <laughs> ball there. Were, were yeah. you one of those who sort of wondering uh, where this might end not. up? No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very friendly with the Wicker manager Matt Bloomfield who who managed him before he came here and he really sang his praises and uh, and I appreciate it's a lower lower division but he, he came comes with a, a strong scoring record I know he struggled a little bit some here and there within a step up to mm -hmm. the championship but um, I think he's a he's a strong-willed lad and he's uh, yeah he's, he's confident enough mm. so no I didn't 
but yeah. I, you could hear it around the ground. Mm. Mm. Disappointing, really, but that, but you know, he, he he silenced them with a good finish. Absolutely fair play to him, yeah. because we're trying to think, oh, who's the penalty take? We're looking down the team, and yeah. he stepped up and he's confident, he stuck it away. There won't be any doubts mm. when he steps up again. No. Absolutely. Um, let's build on from, <coughs> from there, really. You talked about, at this point in the game, one goal up uh, with, what, 15, 20 minutes left yeah. left in it. It's, it's about management, you mm -hmm. know, managing this game. Uh, and we talked about Sheffield United, an experienced quality team. Mm -hmm. you know, they're going, if you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. And, and we kind of saw that with some of the next few moments, really, where Sheffield, that momentum just started to turn in their favour, didn't it? Yeah, and, and by the way, that, yeah, Naismith had gone on off by, uh, by this time with yes. the, uh, the, the, the hamstring injury. And, and you just wanted, you know, to, yeah, just there, we said Armstrong, although, you know, he's leaning back, and just by not just getting hold of that ball and getting something out of it, it means that they can keep momentum up. And this one, uh, he should be catching that. Yeah. You know, Max, you know, Max will catch that 99 times out of 100. You do that, and, you, and it's about pressure. Uh, and, and in key moments, when there's pressure, that's when, as a goalkeeper, you know, if it was a faster ball, then I mm, totally understand. Mm. But it's in the air a long time, and Mats will do that with his eyes closed. Yeah. But it is about pressure, and he'll learn from this. But next time, you know, when the ball, a loopy ball goes in the box against a team like Sheffield United, mm. just go and catch it. Because it's a run of attacks that gets you, the opposition gets you, yeah, it gets the, 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 the back line in, in disarray because the ball gets knocked out and then where's, where's, my, where's my mate, where's my other, oh he's over there, he's over there and then people can stay in the box, they don't have to run back to their own goal. Mm. That's what leads to goals and that's what happened with Sheffield United. Yeah, yeah and that, that very moment actually as we saw there with, mm. with Max choosing to punch ultimately leads to the corner mm -hmm. and ultimately that's where Sheffield United managed to get their equaliser. Yeah and again it's Suter, they, they've all stayed up there. It's, it's almost like they've had practice before. You know, the ball's <laughs> been going in the box, they haven't quite got on it, and that this time, Suter gets f first contact. They don't, they're not alive to the short corner no. uh, as well. That's too far uh, away. Uh, and Suter's on the far post. I'm not sure he's up against, but he wins that easily. And then, mm. yeah, Oné on on is fortunate. It's, a, it's, you know, it's not it's the greatest header, but he no. does enough, doesn't he? It's accumulation of pressure as well. We yeah. have plenty of opportunities to clear. I don't know if the full mm. build-up shows there, but there's some yeah. frantic defending when it didn't need to be a little bit more calmer. Yeah. Personally, I think it's a mentality. I mm -hmm. think we, sh we, we still haven't got that winning mentality where we've got that experience to, yeah. to have a dominant person either at the back or a keeper to, to show a character yeah. to say... I'm going to get that ball, that's mm -hmm. going to be mine, or I'm going to clear the lines, we're going to pull in. A little bit more character is what I'd ask for, yeah. or a stronger character as well, and I think that would see us through those sort of games. Yeah. 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 The opposite, of course, is Sheffield United, who, who up until those moments really, mm -hmm. you know, I, I just want to finish off really. I mean, because some fans might suggest that you know Max is is arguably at fault for, for leading to that situation. But but in your view, and based on what we're seeing there, it, that's a collective sort of set of errors. Joe, the word you used was accumulation. You know. That all that doesn't happen if you do the very first thing right, yeah. and it's and in Sheffield United they're thinking, well, they're just letting us, they're just letting us stay on the front foot. And not once in that last twenty minutes mm. do I remember Sheffield United players having to run back to their own goal. Yeah. You know, so it was all in front of them, uh, and they they were, we never won a free kick, we never calmed the game down, mm. nobody went down, yeah. you know, injured, time waste, there was yeah, no yeah. time wasting. You know, all these things come come with experience and. Unfortunately, all the experienced players were, were off. Yeah, yeah. So you're hoping. I know yeah, this is the first loss in they've got, what's it been a, a trem yes. tremendous yeah. run, of, run of games. So from this, you're hoping they don't let it happen again. That's yeah. a, that's a, you know, yeah, because they worked so hard to get into. Look, if Sheffield United come and plays you off the pitch, and then you think, yeah. oh, yeah, Joe, you've out your hands up. Certainly wasn't the mm -hmm. case. City after 70 minutes did everything right against the top team. Just those moments cost mm. them. I think that's the real frustrating part mm. is the fact that that was a game tonight where we could have beaten third in the league. Yeah. And uh, I think it was down to self-inflicted, really, a yeah. lot of the, a lot of our problems this yeah. evening. You know, I appreciate there's a lot of injuries, a lot of players in different roles, but yeah, ultimately game management sees three points for us there. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And when Liam Manning goes and, and looks at this as a, a manager and a coach, when it's self-inflicted, it's a lot better to say it than if the other opposition are better than you. You know, that Sheffield United weren't better than no, City tonight, no. but the ways bills like right up there. These are all yeah. things that can be rectified easily. And so when those players go back and look, and look at their performances, I think, yeah, I, I won't do that. I shouldn't mm. do that again. Mm. I won't do that again. And, and I'll get it right because Absolutely. it's those moments when you're under pressure. Can you do the right thing? Absolutely. Well, look, I think we've got a few more clips really just to mm -hmm. sort of tie off uh, the game because there was still. You know, that was 86 minutes Sheffield United scored the equaliser, but amazingly, you know, what can happen in 10 minutes of, of football uh, because somehow they managed to go on and build 
and get the three points. But it was, you know, next really, uh, well, as we can see here, the, the, the moment really that leads to this. You know, with two games in a row, I watched my own side, Fulham, the, with one nil down with uh, a few minutes to go. And as soon as they got the first goal, they went and got the second. It's amazing what momentum does uh, and confidence. All of a sudden, they look like a top three side. Look at the, look at the white shirts in and around the box. That first time ball into Boas, lets it run across his yeah. body, which is brilliant, by the way, and doesn't, get, doesn't even get his head up. He knows where the goal is, just concentrates on his technique. And in terms of the left foot, there wasn't a better left foot than oh, in the division. No. That's uh, a great finish. Isn't it? it That's it, two and, and two for him as well. Yeah, yeah and he makes it look easy. He was, he was out wide for most of the game. Yeah. The city kept him out wide and he's putting in the box, he's defending the crosses. All of a sudden the game becomes very narrow because of that accumulation of attacks. You know, he can get himself in, he knows he can get himself into a dangerous area. And unfortunately for Anis, he's, he's, he's the man who's marking him and he's, mm, yeah, he's just wrong, the wrong yeah, side of him. He's just, wrong, but he's not there. a defender. No. You know, he's not, he's not a defender. And so, you know, you're, <laughs> you're down to 10 men. You know, there's loads of reasons why, but, yes. but you still, are in a position to mm. see the game out, yeah. you know, and, and that's what City didn't do. Certainly, don't lose the game. Mm. You know, yeah. Yeah, and I just wanted to ask as well about, uh, well, you mentioned the fact that City were down to 10 men, uh, mm. and actually it was just before the goal, of course, that, that Rob Dickey got his marching orders. Um, himself, not long on the pitch, replacing Cal Naismith, who looks like he's pulled up with the hamstring. Um, well, we, but we, this is going to, just going to say, this is going to cause possibly a selection issue for Liam, absolutely. thinking about Norwich on Saturday. Absolutely, because, you know, got injuries, injuries galore on the back line, yeah. and he was just coming back from injury. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's going to be prove a really difficult game away to Norwich on yeah. Saturday with with a with a very weakened back four. Yeah. But, but in agreement, this is this is unfortunately a, a red a red for Rob. He's got no choice here. It's never self inflicted. I mean, you had plenty of opportunity there to take less touches, keep the ball moving, see the game out, game management, mm -hmm. and uh, does the complete opposite. Takes too many touches, and at the time, the right thing to pull him back because he was in on goal. You know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I just I was just looking at the clip again, and it was, I looked, and when he looked up. And, and it's no defence of, uh, of Rob, but when he looks up, he needs a midfield player in front of him, and there's yeah. no one in front of him, mm. you know, because that's why he's doing that, to play into a midfield player to, to go wide. The other option he could have had was to just let it run across his body and go back to the mm. goalkeeper, mm. you know, so, and he'll be thinking about that all night, but when he does look up, there needs to be someone saying, yeah. and that's experience, you know, saying get in the right positions, you know, that's, they've worked on it. We've seen them do it so many times, play through the two yeah. presses and it go wide, there was no one there, mm. you know. So yeah, Rob Dick will take responsibility because he's 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 a he's, we've met him. He's a top guy, yeah. and he will take responsibility for that. But there's other things people could have helped him, you know, uh, yeah. as well, and the help wasn't there. Yeah, I mean, he was a huge player, you know, player of the season yeah, last massive, year. Massive. So it's gonna, it's, you know, he's going to be a miss. He's yeah, going to be a miss exactly. on, on Saturday. And I want to ask you just quickly about about what this all means f for Norwich. Uh, you know, a team who've. Had, had a similar season in many ways so far to City, you know, similar position. Um, but Carroll Road is a really tough place to go. Mm -hmm. And what with the injuries, what with you know Dickie now it not being available, um, it's going to be a, you know it's going to be a big game uh, for City, right? Yeah, but I think the pressure effectively will be off. Mm -hmm. I think the the selection, the fact that it won't be Liam's first choice team because it won't be available, um, and it'll be an opportunity for other players to come through the academy, the the players who are on the side and the players who've been watching these games, you know, mm -hmm. to go and prove their worth. And they showed tonight that we can compete with third, third in the table, with uh, with with players in wrong positions. Yeah, um, and that's a so positive to take from from tonight, right? I, I, yeah, and, yeah. I, and I think it's, I don't want to be too overly critical of us tonight, even yeah. though I think we've you know we're self-inflicted, mm -hmm. you know, the loss, because there, there were positives tonight and there were moments of good play. Yeah, um, yeah. you know, we moved the ball well. <laughs> Um, there was, and, and as I said, going back to it, there's some good performances of lads in different positions they're not familiar with. Yeah. It's not, it's, yeah, it's, there was lots of good play. Mm -hmm. Although it wasn't the most exciting game, but you're playing against Sheffield United. Remember that for 70, 70 minutes, you know, you controlled, controlled them. They had one shot against the post yeah. in the first half. Second half, you controlled the game. You got the goal up, and then it's just decisions. About two yeah. or three decisions. They get that right, it changes the whole game. And so you, you, go, you shouldn't get too carried away. You know about, about um, you know the, the mistakes because people make mistakes. But in terms of the attitude, the attitude of the players, they gave it everything. You see that at the end; they were absolutely on yeah, their knees, yeah, yeah. absolutely gave it everything. They have to start again mm -hmm. against Norwich, and they can start again yes. uh, against Norwich. This thing about 365, I hate all these records <laughs> that yeah. none of the players know about, none of the managers know about, <laughs> no one else get, really cares apart from the fans. The yeah. players don't know that. They all they want to do 
is get back on pick it for, and pick up points with Bristol City. Yeah, fantastic. All right, chaps. Well, look, that's all we've got time for here on Robins TV Extra Time. So, Joe, thank you very much. Pleasure. Leroy, of course, we'll see you uh, across the rest of the season. But uh, there you go. That is it for us here this evening on Robins TV Extra Time. Uh, we'll be back in action, of course, on Saturday for the trip to Carroll Road. Uh, three o'clock kickoffs will be live here on Robins TV from 2.30pm. We'll hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Good night.